Our reading this morning is from Matthew's Gospel, the second chapter. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who, was, who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied. For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and incense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is our gospel and our sermon text this morning. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Well, this morning we're looking at this gospel reading about the, the magi, the wise men. And I'm curious, when you think of those individuals, what do you think of? What comes to mind? Three. Of them. three. three. We three kings, right? They're kings. Uh, yeah, what else comes to mind? What's that? Wisdom. Wise. Okay, they're wise men. What else comes to mind? Gifts. They bring gifts. They travel, a long way. travel a long way. How do they get there? How do they travel? Camel. It's in every picture, right? What else comes to mind? Powerful leaders. Okay, it's interesting, isn't it? We have this whole story around them that they, when do they show up? <laughs> if you look at all the Christmas cards, they're right there, right? I mean, when the baby's delivered, they made it, which is great. I'm, but it's interesting because all of these things, that there's three of them, we, we, don't, we don't know that there's three. It never says that. We do know there's three gifts, and I think that's why we assume that. We don't know how they traveled. Uh, I think we assume camels because we think of them as being rich, uh, kings, wealthy. Uh, we don't know how long their journey took. We don't know when they arrived. We assume uh, that it's uh, within two years of Jesus' birth because later King Herod will order all babies in Bethlehem, all male babies under the age of two to be killed. But, but we don't know if it was day one they arrived or if it was... You know, 700 days later, we just don't really know. We piece all of these things together. But the Bible does tell us what it tells us, what we just read. As we go through that story, I find three things stand out to me, and, and I'll share them with you. The first one is this, that a, a journey with God requires faith. It takes faith. Let me read again for you one verse from this passage. It says this, it's the, these magi speaking, they ask, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east. They have complete faith that this king has been born, that they're looking at the right star, don't they? They set out on this journey. They don't know for sure if this is the star or if, this is, if it's leading to the right place. I don't know how long it's going to take. I mean, imagine being a neighbor to these wise men. Where are you going? Don't know. How long is it going to take you? Not sure. Why are you going? Well, we think that a baby's been born. We think he's going to be a king. It doesn't sound all that wise, does it? I mean, they just don't know a lot about this journey that they're going on. And yet we see time and time and time again in the Bible that walking with God requires incredible amounts of faith. And think about Noah building that ark. Why are you building such a big boat? I think it's going to rain a lot. Why are you getting all these animals together? 
I think I need all of them. <laughs> How many animals are you to bring? All of the animals. <laughs> you know, I mean, it just seems a little bit crazy. It, t- it would take so much faith for them. Or think about Abraham leaving his family, his hometown, and going on, off to this promised land. Where are you going, Abraham? I'm not really sure. Don't, don't really know, but I'm going on faith. Hebrews 11 says this, without faith, without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Without faith, it's impossible. To walk with God is impossible and because these are spiritual things, spiritually discerned. A journey with God requires faith. It also requires worship and sacrifice. When the wise men came on their journey, it was for the purpose of worshiping this newborn king, to bring their gifts to him. There's more to worship, though, more to sacrifice than gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Anyone bring any myrrh for the offering today? Frankincense? You guys, you all brought gold on the same day. Right? That's the only assumption I can be left with. Isn't it interesting that they bring this this gift for him, and gifts, worship, all involve sacrifice. This journey that they take was a sacrifice. It would have cost them time, would have cost them money, would have cost them the expense of the gift, the the risk of uh, even being robbed on their journey. It took faith, and then it took this sacrifice. There was a time when David wanted to make a sacrifice uh, to worship God. And so he, he goes to get the supplies to build this altar and to make this sacrifice, and he runs into this problem because the guy who he's trying to buy it from wants to give it all to him. He says, here's the king, I'll, I'll give you anything you need. And David says this to him, he says, no, I insist on paying you for it. I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. It's, it's not a sacrifice if it doesn't cost you anything. I, I know often at Lent people will give something up. I like to give up things like coffee because I don't drink it. <laughs> God, this year I'm going to keep not drinking coffee for you, right? I mean, it's no sacrifice. There's no worship in that. It would be much different if I said, God, I'm going to give up, I don't know, Playing Lego or watching TV or, I mean, something like that, right? Things that I do a lot, that would be a sacrifice. There would be a cost, an expense to it. I, w- I insist you on paying for it. Uh, I don't know what your worship costs you. Uh, maybe there's the time. Maybe there's the money. Maybe there's uh, control that we have to give up when we worship God. Maybe there's image or, or self-image or perception that we give up when we worship God. God, there's always a sacrifice when we worship. A journey with God requires faith. It requires sacrifice. And it requires change. I think it's so interesting in this story, these uh, guys, these wise men, these magi arrive, and then they cannot go back the way that they came. Uh, That's so true in our Christian faith, isn't it? We cannot go back the way that we came. That's what repentance is all about, right? We turn away from the sin that we were following, that we were pursuing. We can't go back there anymore. Faith, sacrifice, and change. Can I tell you three things that Lutherans don't always like? (laughs) Faith sacrifice, and change. And I'm not just picking on Lutherans. It's true for all people. Uh, We like to have just a little bit of faith, right? That's what we tell people. Just have a little faith. You run into a problem and they say, well, did you call the repairman? Yeah, I called him. He couldn't help it. Did you phone your dad? Yeah, I phoned my dad. He couldn't fix it. Did you look on Google? Yeah, I looked on Google. It didn't work. Well, then have a little faith. You know, it's all going to work out in the end. If you can't do it on your own, if you can't get help to do it, if Google can't help you, well, then leave it to God. Maybe he can do something. We were just up at Big White. It was so dry there. Now, just the air is so dry. We were turning into prunes. We're all, sh- you know, kind of shrinking up. We're all putting on lip balm every two, two words. It's hard to have a conversation with anyone. And, and Silas's lips were just so bad, he started crying. And so, Miranda and I prayed for him. And then when we got home... Well, even the next day, he said, well, my lips are fine. 
And so we got home, and Miranda started to complain about her lips. And said, oh, my lips are still so dry. And Silas said, you know why, Mom? You only prayed for my lips. <laughs> Often we think of the last resort, but, but I mean, why wouldn't we go to God first? If we believe that God has all power, can do all things, is always listening and eager to answer us, a journey with God requires faith, and He should always be our starting point. Let's start there. And then phone the repairman, and then phone our dad or our mom or, or whoever, but why don't we start there? We also don't like sacrifice. You've got to give something up. No, 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 I don't need to give something up. I need more storage. What I need is uh, more units up the wall. I need more coat hangers. What I need is more closets. I need a bigger house. What I need is an expansion. What I need is a three-car garage with a carport. Because, I mean, how many of us can actually park in our garages? Just about nobody. It's full of our stuff, right? I mean, I don't want to give something up. I just want to accommodate what I have. I don't want to sacrifice. I'll volunteer, but how much will this cost me? How much time will this take? How committed do I need to be? I mean, aren't those the questions we kind of wrestle through when we encounter a new situation? Worship and sacrifice demand that we trust in God. I'm going to give this up and trust that God will still take care of me, still provide for me, still uh, fill all the needs that I have. You know, I heard some awesome stories, just great stories uh, through Free and Joyce Response last year and this year again and, and other stories as well. But I remember last year one family saying that they decided to, that they would give more to God. They were going to trust Him in that even though their uh, situation wasn't perfect. And shortly after that, they got a phone call uh, saying, we would like to give you a vehicle from a family member. And they said, isn't that great? That's God providing. We needed a vehicle. He phoned us up. We trusted Him and and we made this sacrifice, and God's taking care of us. I heard from an, another family this year, neither of them had a job at the time, and they said, we're going to step up, we're going to increase what we're giving, even though they didn't have a job. I mean, isn't that incredible faith? Isn't that an incredible sacrifice? And then, sure enough, the phone rings, and, and there's a job. Do you want to take this job? A journey with God takes faith, and it takes sacrifice a risk, uh, trusting that God will fulfill and provide everything that we need. But what's the number one thing that Lutherans don't like? If we were on Family Feud, the survey would say, change, right? I mean, let's not put up our hands. Let's just assume they're all up. Nobody likes change. We don't like change because we're comfortable and we feel safe and we know what to expect. We've always done it that way, and it, it, it's always worked, even if it's not working anymore. We say that to ourselves, this has always worked. We just don't like change. Change takes faith. Now, I think uh, you've probably heard this. People will say, I don't need to change. It's everyone else around me that has the problem, right? Look at all these people. They're all the ones with the problem. I'm okay. Uh, a journey with God requires faith and sacrifice, and change. You can't go back the way that you came because God's changed you. And that's what repentance is all about. That's what our value of ongoing transformation is all about, that, that this journey isn't over, that God's still changing me, transforming me, making me someone new. I've been here for just over three years. I can say with confidence that church we're okay with change. Oh, there's been a lot of changes since I've been here, and I love that we, are, we hold on so tightly to Jesus and so tightly to great theology and so tightly to Scripture. But a lot of other things can change. When are we going to have coffee? I don't know. Uh, when should our Bible study be? I don't know. Uh, what service should go first? I don't know. I do know that we need to keep worshiping Jesus. I do need, know that our theology needs to be just rock-solid focused on Jesus, but a lot of other things are up for grab. Should we have chocolate chip cookies or maple cookies? I don't care, right? I mean, we're okay with change as long as we're focused in on Jesus and walking with Him and trusting in Him and depending on Him. I like the story of the Magi, uh, these wise men, these three kings or however many there were. But I think really it points us to an even greater story, 
uh, these wise men traveled on this long journey from the east. Well, doesn't that point us to our God who made an incredible journey, not just from the east, but from heaven above, who comes to us, comes to us to save us, to rescue us from our sin. It comes to live and die for us and then rise again from the cross to the grave, leaving both of them empty, beating death for us. And then he comes to us again through his Holy Spirit. Jesus says, I am sending you this great comforter, the counselor. The Bible says, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, the church and the Bible and the Christian faith and all those things that we do seem crazy because they're all understood through the Holy Spirit. So God comes to us and he's the one who gives us that gift of faith. What an incredible gift that is for us. We talk about the wise men and the gifts that they bring, but it just points us again to Jesus and the incredible sacrifice and the gifts that he comes to give to us. Uh, These gifts of freedom, of forgiveness, of truth, of salvation. They make this sacrifice of their time and and their wealth. Well, Jesus comes and makes a sacrifice of himself. John the Baptist sees him and says, look, there's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. How does he do that? Up on the cross, dying and then rising again for us. The wise men remind us of the incredible journey that God took, coming and becoming man, walking with us. Remind us of the incredible sacrifice that Jesus makes, giving himself for us. We talk about the change in the wise men, that they have to go back some different way. But the great change in the Bible is that Jesus comes to change us. The Holy Spirit comes to change us, to bring us from death to life, from lost to found, from blindness to sight, from darkness to light, from being people who are lost and in despair to being children of a loving, gracious, forgiving, heavenly Father. Our faith now is all centered on Jesus. He's the one who gives us faith. He's the one who gives us forgiveness. and He's the one who tr- transforms and changes us. I like the story of the wise men. I like that story of faith and of their journey. I'm even more interested in hearing the story of your journey as God gives you faith, as God leads you and provides for you in your sacrifice, and as God changes you and I May we be wise as we walk with Jesus, our Savior. In his name we pray, amen.